nne mpaka rajas by the way anashindwa ku ku let it go bana i'm sure you're having a good time back at home i go by the name karen jessa and you can find me on all social media platforms as on facebook karen kang i mean karen kairetu sorry and instagram is karen kang and on youtube is karen jessa yes today i have a very special guest in studio because this guy does not um uh, is not like recognizing me <laughs> but i kept it at that you know yeah he comes from deka deka yes just like the song what a perfect intro to this he is a producer as well like in chini amaji but then again he's been doing big things back at home and ame collab na so cmg yeah so we have some cmg stuff in in studio and of course maze ananishangaza kwa sababu His name is Django but you don't spell it as as you pronounce it is D apostrophe and then Django. So maybe let's start from there Django like uli kama page na hiyo jina Django. Yeah first of all good morning. Good morning. Yo. You told me you woke <coughs> up at what time? I woke up at Kituka for 20 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and but I got late man. I don't know what's the problem man. <laughs> But anyways, uh my name Jungle. Mm-hmm. D Jungle. That is silent or you can say it. it depends on how you feel like. So, um Wait, why is the D silent? Because it's too long like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, Okay, it's, no it's, pun intended, right? Yeah, no pun intended. Okay, great. It, it used to be um when I was growing up, my second name is Changu. Mm-hmm. Changu. Mm-hmm. So it, there used to be this Uh, this famous dance to Django a, oh, a. Django. so he went from Django to Django mm-hmm. then my, my brother was creating all this my bigger brother then there was this day there was this like bad guy in, in the hood who mm-hmm. was like the guy at that time everybody used to be scared of him <laughs> he used to be called Django exactly how I spell mine d mm-hmm. apostrophe Django so he went from Django to Django mm-hmm. Django Django and at first I was like no why would you call me that i don't like that guy he's a yeah. bully and yeah. all that stuff mm-hmm. But after it kicked in and um I kind of embraced it that's what everybody calls me for a nickname and uh I used it for my creative side to mm-hmm. create another independent character called Jungle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fierce and har. Yeah, so yeah. Jungle is supposed to be like the guy the hip hop a villain. Okay. Yeah, the bad guy. Text to call unless the booty call. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But, okay so, so you guess what me and you are neighbors or we used to be neighbors. Yeah, mm. back in Thika, section 9, shake shake. Oh. Represent. <laughs> oh, so tell us more about, you know, uh, your car history, you key record from the Kadex back in the day because I'm pretty sure you started yeah, this. Yeah, I started. Table. I started um I started um looking for um mu- my career music career um mm-hmm. early enough as early as I was 17, 16. Mm-hmm. And I remember at the time there was only one studio in Thika, one studio. Which and is? still is one studio, I think. It was called um it was called Prosum Prosum Studios mm-hmm. something like that So if you're a recording artist from Theka you know where to go I think Yeah, yeah Prosum <laughs> and this was the thing this was the thing right um mm-hmm. he the guy used to have artists they used to make music mm-hmm. but they didn't know how to push the music okay, And at the time I, I was in high school but I was aggressive enough I knew a person and get radio mm-hmm. where 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 So before being an MC mm-hmm. I didn't have enough money to pay for studio. So this guy was like, "Yo, do you want me to give you a free um recording?" I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "Help me push this artist by mm-hmm. taking the music to radio stations and every time the music got played, I used to get like um a bonus session, bonus session." Yeah. Then um after some times I noticed that uh it was too little too little for nothing. Mm-hmm. Then I started hustling and thank God I had uh, a lot of ideas of how I could make money mm-hmm. and I saved up for my first mixtape and it changed everything. Oh yeah. Yeah, after then I was like, yo, everybody wanted to record me without me paying them. Mm-hmm. Used to be like if I record at your studio then you're growing, man. You <laughs> you, you got to have this kid. Yeah. So you you are a big package. You, you see, you you're not only bringing the track yeah. to yeah. to record but you're also you know hyping up the studio yeah. you have hyping up the group yeah. and the people working around you wait so let me know about uh, what do you love about Tika cuz i mean umeimba well, sana mpaka your youtube channel <laughs> is sujui so jungle 237 in case you did yeah, not we have know that, that and is we have Tika code, Tika. We ha- code, yeah. yeah so um i grew up in Tika and i loved the place so much because i was born and raised in Tika mm-hmm. everything from my mom to my pops 
it's rooted in thicker. Mm -hmm. Like um, if you ask the local community, they probably know my pops because of his participation in the church and what. <laughs> He's a big influence there. Everybody in Thika knows everybody in Thika. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and most of the people know my mom, mm -hmm. even the street kids. Yeah. Because she used to teach in a public school in Thika and she was a good teacher, mm -hmm. I guess, because mm -hmm. most people still remember her. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the same, same way um, they have a very, very big impact in the city. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have a big impact too. Mm -hmm. And when I was growing up, there was nobody to look up to. Mm -hmm. There was nobody who was saying like, yo, I come from Tika, mm -hmm. yo, I do yeah. this, do that. <laughs> and funny so, enough, her money is from Tika, but she has yeah, but never, ever I know, I know a couple of guys that's from Tika, right? Mm -hmm. But they're never proud of it. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. So I was like, I want to be the first guy that will be proud of where, the, where he comes from. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, that gave me... Um, a good tag name because everybody like yo thicker 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 mm -hmm. thicker mm -hmm. and since then everywhere we go we've performed uh so many places eldoret narok meru where and everywhere we go man we're like nikki say what thicker say what everybody's like thicker awesome. it's like thicker awesome. is everywhere it's yeah. not just the place it's the music now and the culture so good vibes yeah good vibes, all good through. vibes yeah great so let's jump right into your work yeah. um what inspires your rapping? What I mean, Ulian <laughs> as in how what told you, Maze, this is what I want to do and this is it? Okay, when I started, I was a rapper and only a rapper. So I can say I'm an artist, yeah, because I can do so many things besides rapping. Mm -hmm. But when I started, excuse me, I was a rapper and only a rapper, and the fact that I used to freestyle, most people know me from freestyles. Mm -hmm. I, I was so good at freestyles that um, I remember when I was in high school mm -hmm. i went to kenyatta university culture week and i won a rap battle and i was wow. in high school yeah i was so damn young man i i always watched the video i'm like nah that's not me <laughs> and then after that i i happened to join ku afterwards mm -hmm. and um through my participation in the hip-hop culture and putting all the rappers t bringing all the rappers together and stuff it made me um a public figure in the school and catapulted me to radio. Mm -hmm. Like, KU is a very, very, very big place, and I actually thank everybody from KU that um, bumped to my music and my mm -hmm. first mixtapes, because KU has people from everywhere, basically everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, from so, all corners of the country. Yeah, it helped my music diffuse everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's always weird that I don't think I'm where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And I, I have fans even in places like Kisumu Street, Carbonet, where <laughs> they like, you come perform. I'm like, how do you even know my know music, me. man? <laughs> yeah. I think so, you have a great style, but I'd want you to define it yourself because I can't do it for you. Yeah, so kindly define your style maybe. And oh. I mean, Mbichwa is, I, I don't know, I've never heard of that word, <laughs> but I love it and I'm stuck to it. <laughs> I, I, I'm just there like Mbichwa too. Hey, Mbichwa too. Mbichwa too. So tell us about your style. Your, uh, my your style is style. inspired by, by the hood. I'm, um, I'd like to call myself a social experimentalist mm -hmm. because um, sometimes to get inspiration, I usually do some petty stuff as <laughs> nice upon the tuk tuk just to get me through, get the right. Yeah. Somewhere I wasn't supposed to pass, but I want to pass through there mm -hmm. to feel what's going on. Because the more you're successful, the more it detaches you from being present in the hood. Mm -hmm. So your music, you can stop being real if you do not focus on how you, how you get that motivation and stuff. And for me, I like speaking for average people in the hood. You know, mm -hmm. that's the mm -hmm. voice of jungle mm -hmm. yeah that's the power he has so my style is hip-hop and music generally mm -hmm. inspired by things that i see and people experience from a basic kenyan perspective mm -hmm. yeah it's not nothing fictional like yeah we're driving ferraris we're doing <laughs> what now nah, we're, we're looking to not after colo yeah. for 20 yeah baby, because that's what we're doing man <laughs> Okay, I'll ask you this yeah. question in private because we can't ask that question right now. Yeah. As in, how she and Dr. Aftakul was that for 20 years? Anyway, Ma. you'll answer me later. <laughs> so, um, wait. Ukona Mbichwa 2, Kuna Mbichwa 1, Mbichwa 2. So, you've done one as a documentary and the other one is more like a track. Yeah. Basically, what, what difference does it make, you know, to have the same title of a song, but the other one is, you know, a story? Actually, itself. they're both stories, but yeah. one is shorter, the other one is long. Yeah, actually, um, Mbicho, Mbicho 2 was, uh, at the, was from the mixtape TTC. That, that was my first mixtape, my mm -hmm. de debut mixtape. And mm -hmm. it, it had a lot of positive impact in the hood because people related to it. They liked the, how real it was. Mm -hmm. Everybody was like, that's me, man. That's me looking for that colo. I like how he's saying it. That's how I feel. And um, 
that made the song blow up mm -hmm. out of proportion from what I expected. I didn't expect it to go that way. Mm -hmm. Then it, it it was such a big deal that Mitro 2 became that song. Everybody was like, uh, I was like, yo, what's your name? I'm like, Django. Then I'm like, uh, you know Mitro? He's like, oh, Mitro 2. <laughs> so it became Mr. Mitro or something like that. Mm -hmm. It helped me grow. So now that I'm in a position where I can do um, better recording and with better quality, mm -hmm. I thought that, first of all, I wanted to do the remix of which I already did it. It's out there, featuring Oxido mm -hmm. and uh, Flaco, De Niro, and it's such a good song. And from that, I wanted also to make a short film so mm -hmm. that people could feel where the inspiration for the music came. And thank, uh, thank God I found good actors like Dewey B, mm -hmm. Farouk from Tidy High, mm -hmm. uh, Citizen Royal Media, and they did a good job in putting the story into work. And mm -hmm. I like the enthusiasm they had because I called them I was like yo I have this project uh, I've written this script but I haven't because I'm not good at writing scripts mm -hmm. would you come and do something and they're like yo man I don't even need a script just tell me the story <laughs> man yeah and apparently it's a simple story so it, it was easy to implement mm -hmm. and that's how it came into being Okay, so yeah. that's where your production comes in. Yeah, that's um, where my production comes in. You're not just an, a rapper, but also you have create. You yeah. are creating content. Yeah. Great. So I uh, remember the challenge I told you were going to carry out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's about that time. It's, it's about, about that time. time. Yes. So I just want you to turn your back a little bit. Okay. Mm hmm So yeah, you can see the screen behind you. Okay. Here on Why in the Morning, we have a segment called Rate the Bar, where we're just gonna, you know, give you that bar. Okay. And you're gonna rate it out of ten. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you're feeling it, if you're not, you're gonna let us know. Let's go. Okay, great. Uh huh. So you can probably read it aloud. Mm. See, I wanna hold money in my hand like a donda. Mm hmm Ndayangu ichune kama tatu za ronga. Mm -hmm. Sikuizine na points msupa tunabonga. Mm -hmm. After show ni kikushu vile mi, ni donga. Mm -hmm. So itisha mzinga leo mi niko, niko na nyuki. Si tuko Mombasa. Uh, zi tuko na nyuki. Uh, that's a good line. <laughs> And on a road trip basi next to ndenye. Kwa <laughs> chuma kachumbari kwenye beli. <laughs> hey, hey. It's nice, it's nice. I'd actually give this bar mm -hmm. right here because uh, it had punchlines. It got me laughing. I like punchlines <laughs> and things that make me think out of the box. Jun Zinga, Leoni Konanyuki. That's nice. Mm -hmm. that's, that's nice. That's, that actually carries all the marks in there. Are you for real? Yeah. Out of 10? Out of 10, I'd give it a, a 6 because it's all here. Woo? It's all here. Woo? Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> six out of ten. Let's see yeah. who the artist is. Revelation right. coming through. Mbidi. Ah, it's Mbidi. Mbidi. <laughs> it's Mbidi. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Man. Nice. So six yeah. out of ten, Mbidi for you. Yeah. Great. So the next one is. Hmm. Waki pose me in a play. Speed kama kwenye PLA. Kwenye pesa si delay unstoppable. NGG. Na henya ma eh? Na henya ma NGG. Mm -hmm. Niweke mambo ok, ok, ok. Mahali pazuri ni stay. Michongo, so, uh, michongo sona pay, pay. Ubongo wangu heavyweight kweje. Romani sipote. Kile usichuweza push no. Niki push every day. The bad man on the way. Um, actually, I'd give it, um, I'd give it, I won't be mean. I won't, I will give it um, five out of four out of ten because it's basically rhyming there's nothing else like uh -huh. boggling about it mm -hmm. it's basically rhyme rhymes though pla rhymes delay okay. ngg ngg so final yeah. score final score five or four five or four <sighs> what's your final score let's give him five are you sure it's not me it's <laughs> you bruh <laughs> eh? okay let's give him five i'll give him five five five, five yeah, because out of ten. it's just rhyme nothing nothing like <sighs> mind blowing okay yeah. Nothing like... There's no punchline. <laughs> yeah, I love punchlines, Mazi. All right. You gotta have a punchline, man. <laughs> yeah. Great, so let's see who the artist is. Uh, I hope we won't be shocked. Chin who that? Who that? Ah, probably it's because it's Chin Bees. <laughs> yeah, because I, I find like Chin Bees hip hop is like pop hip hop. It's mm -hmm. not that complicated. Mm -hmm. Probably it's because it's written. When he's saying it, maybe it has a flow. Mm -hmm. But when it's like Amigos rap, when you write it, it's petty. But when he's saying it, 
you at feel least it. it's got a flow, yeah. Mm -hmm. So great. Uh, wait, let us know who you were planning to work with in the future. Or you told me you have an album coming up. Yeah. He has two albums, guys, by the way, and a few mixtapes. And he's telling me how mixtapes sometimes, you know, you just go in all yeah. out talking about your life and everything. But with an yeah. album, you need to find yeah. a specific topic to, you know. Yeah, and theme to focus on. Mm -hmm. I actually have two, two mixtapes and one album. Mm -hmm. First mixtape is called THC, Thika City or THC. Okay. Uh, second one was Thika 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 Tape, TTT, Thika Thika Tape. And um, what I like about mixtapes, let me, let me, what I like about mixtapes is because you're not bound to something. Mm -hmm. You're actually putting out a body of work that's not, that doesn't have themes and what. And mm -hmm. people like that because some people, uh, the real hip hop fans, yeah. like it raw. They don't wait, like it. Even I me, wait, I, I like a lot of music from mixtapes more okay. than I do from albums when mm -hmm. it comes to my favorite artists. Because I feel when they're working on mixtapes, they're free to talk about anything. Mm -hmm. But when they're working on albums, they are narrowed down to speak about something. And, and not all of them can make it, you know? So that leaves out outstanding people like J. Cole and stuff. Even J. Cole used to have great mixtapes. Mm -hmm. I, I like his mixtapes more like, than his too, albums. Me too, me too, yeah. yeah. And um, I have an album called Unchained. Mm -hmm. It dropped last year. I had, I had the pleasure to work with big artists. Uh, and one of the big artists I worked with was Zaka, Zaka Munyeji. He's actually my mentor because when I was growing up, I used to, I used to rock to his jams, man. Like <laughs> I know all his jams from word to word. And when he was recording, I was so anxious to meet him. I was always like, yo, Zaka, mm -hmm. tell me about the stories, man. <laughs> tell me about Uku Flady. tell me about what, Everything. how did he used to do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was so much fun. So future yeah. plans, who do you plan to work with? Who I plan to work with, I actually, um, I'm planning on, I feel like hip hop is kind of male saturated. Mm -hmm. And that narrows down the audience to mostly male, male audience. And a lot of chicks don't get the chance to vibe the music, mm -hmm. probably because it's too raw. Oh, we only focus on one side of the audience and the other side. So because of that, um, I started transitioning from being just a rapper mm -hmm. to being an artist. That way, I, I wanted to make my music diverse because I, I noticed after some years in the studio, I noticed, man, you can do EDMs, you can do what, nanny. but the rule is never compromise on the quality. So when I come back to hip hop, I'm still as raw I'm supposed to be. When I'm doing singing and stuff, I'm as mellow I'm supposed to be. So for that, the rapper, I mean, the artist who I'd like to work with is Fena, because Fena or Blinky, mm -hmm. Blinky Bill, because I feel like the level of creativity is different from what a typical rapper will bring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would you classify Fena as the Fena, topest? I think Fena, Fena's got flavor, and mm -hmm. I, I, I like the flavor. If you put Fena with a good rapper, it's, it will work it's like magic. Jam. Yeah, it's, it's a jam. Tune. And on the other hand, Blinky, Hey man, Blinky's always got the beats and he's always got the vibe, man. You know? I'm always like, yo, Blinky, if you give me a chance, man, you probably will regret it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Blinky, yeah. where, for wherever you are, bro, uh, kindly reach out to... Um, yeah, but I don't know where to find you. <laughs> <laughs> reach out to Django because he's ready for you. He is ready yeah. for you. Now, we have come to the end of our interview. I hope you guys loved this. I hope you guys are down for Django. By then, Anyambia, people's going to him from... I mean, that is how a true um, artist should be. And, yeah. you know, as in an treat my fans on a respect because you get that respect yeah. back. Actually, I get, I get inspiration from fans. Mm -hmm. Like, there was this time I was almost giving up. I was like, yo, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Sometimes this music doesn't pay and stuff and stuff. And there was this time, the reason why I noticed my music is so powerful, mm -hmm. I met this Donda. Oh, Donda, look at him. Matiangi low, I think the yeah. fares hiked up like mm -hmm. overnight. <laughs> yeah, true. So, some place I was supposed to go with 20 bob, now I was supposed to go with 50 bob. Mm -hmm. Now I had coins, I had like 30 bob. So mm -hmm. I paid him 20 bob. He's like, yo, man, it's 50. I was like, man, maybe look to me in Pesa and stuff like that. It was mm -hmm. a tussle. Then it was like, yeah, to I was like, wait, wh why did he like chill? Then after all, it was like, when he jungle. I was like, uh, what? You noticed yo. me. So you get free uh, stuff was petty, at the end of the day. But at least it was a good, it was good, it was a good show of um, yeah, yeah. courtesy. And I really, really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's nice, nice stuff. So uh, Tulia, be humble back at home. Kula humble pie, you'll be good. Now, uh, Jumbo G, from, this is, these are comments from our Facebook timeline. And Jumbo G, and I say, hey, G from Moranga, a show iko to, uh, show iko to sana. 
iko juu tu sana iko top tu sana uh, ni cheze classic by Jumbo G it's on YouTube okay we know <laughs> and then Mike OG the king anasema ame to drop ya song yake hapo pia we'll check it out we'll check it out and yeah basically that's just it rain 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 yeah great uh muziki Music. Yay. Ready, yeah. Yay. Let's jump right into music cuz babu we have we are done. We are done. This is why in the morning do make sure you check us out on our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and where else Twitter and yes, everywhere, everywhere. I go by the name's Karen Jessa Tongo. Right is JJ. Yes sir. J J Jango. J J Jango, you got yeah. that right. Okay, on to the music. <laughs> 